Hello everyone, welcome to Delhi Rouge and today I'm going to teach you how to make these beautiful peacock inspired polymer clay earrings. I shall start with the four stones for this piece. Here are my combinations for the four stones. Uh, I've used Oitra clay variety in this entire piece and I've used their translucent and the basic variants to create these four mixes for the four stones for the pair. I won't be going into extreme details to explain this particular process or technique of the four stone um, because I have already covered it in my previous video, shall uh, leave a link for the same in this video if you're really interested in learning this in detail. So we're halfway done with the four stone technique. Uh, I've just balled up all the chopped up pieces and now we will proceed on to the next step of the four stone technique.
and we finally have the veneer ready which I have placed on a very thin sheet of translucent clay. Let me smoothen this out a little bit more before we can cut out pieces that we require for the earrings. Now I shall just smoothen out the complete veneer using this plain printer paper and just burnish it with my hand or my acrylic ruler just to make sure that the sheet of clay is completely smooth on the top. In order to get very clean cuts from my sheet of clay, I use talcum powder for an easy release for my cutters. I just dip the cutters in, a, uh, in some talcum powder or baby powder and then I cut my pieces. Usually talcum powder does not leave residue like cornstarch does, which is why I just prefer using this. And you can just see how easily the cutter gets released from the clay. And from the smaller cutters, I just uh, dip my finger in talcum powder and help release the clay from the cutter. So you can see how clean the cut is and how easily it just came out without any distortions. This also helps avoid fingerprints on the clay, um, which is why I dipped my finger in talcum powder. And you can also smoothen out any rough edges with your finger using talcum powder and just smooth out uh, any surface of clay using just baby powder. This way I'm just gonna take some pieces out of this sheet of clay which I would require for the peacock dangler earrings and uh, this will be a combination of the four stone technique and just plain clay uh, with a screen printing technique used uh, which uh, I will combine in this piece. Now since I had this entire veneer with me I, and, and had scope to cut out many more pieces, I thought I'll cut out some extra pieces which I could use for my other designs in the future and I shall be baking all these pieces together and focus on my peacock dangler earrings for now. Now let's create the focal element of the earrings. I'm using the Oitra basic clay for this and I've mixed that blue color with a tinge of black to get this particular shade. I rolled it out on a setting number three on my pasta machine. I'll now be silk screening on this sheet with a golden acrylic paint using the Moiko silk screen. I'll be leaving the links to all the supplies that I've used in making this piece in the description below. I'll be using a Moiko silk screen uh, on top of my clay. Just ensure that whenever you apply a silk screen on top of your clay, the front side is always on top and the back side is sticking to the clay. So whatever brand you are using of a silk screen, just ensure that the front is on the top and the back is on the clay. And carefully place it on top of your clay and ensure there are no air spaces between the screen and your clay. And uh, smoothen it out with your hand or a squeegee card or whatever you have lying around, even an acrylic roller, and ensure that it's completely adhered to the clay. I'll be using the Camlin acrylic golden paint to uh, uh, screen paint on top of my clay and I'll be using uh, the antique gold variant for uh, getting a very dusty gold look 
and you can use a squeegee card or uh, any um, credit card old credit card that's lying around to just smoothen the silk screen and also apply the paint on top of your clay always remember once you're done using your silk screen just uh, keep a, a bowl of water a white bowl of water or a plate deep dish uh, full of water ready to immediately put your silk screen inside that bowl of water so that the uh, the paint does not get stuck in between the screen and block out your patterns later on so it's just it just helps keep the uh, silk screen alive for a longer period of time if you do that immediately after you've done using it on your clay once we're sure that the paint has dried completely uh, we can start cutting our pieces out of this sheet of clay It's always good to just plan your designs, how you plan to cut them and how the pattern might look once it's cut. So I take a good deal of time in deciding how to cut my pieces. I didn't want to waste the veneer so I cut out some extra pieces from this one as well. I'll probably use them in some future pieces that I might, might make. I'll now just neaten the edges a little using the silicone brushes that I have. Uh, it's always better to make all these changes before you bake your pieces so that you don't have to waste time sanding or cleaning out these pieces once they are baked. It's just easier to manage these fine details before you put it to, put it to bake. So I'll just clean these out with the silicone brushes, the links to which I shall put in my description below and you can check them out from there and buy if you uh, wish to and uh, I'll just speed up this video from here on Now comes the part to give a window to the uh, dangler earrings. I'm planning to give some sort of a window which I shall cover with raisin later on. And I'm planning to use these long ovals in the center of this huge focal piece. And I need to get this centered as best as possible which is why I shall take my time to do this. And now all these pieces will go into my oven and be baked at the prescribed temperature by the brand of clay. I'll be placing a sheet of paper on all these pieces and place some weight on top of them to reduce air bubbles and get completely flat pieces. We have the fronts of the earring baked now, um, but I will be giving them a finished look with a gold backing on all the three elements of the earrings. 
I have also planned the structure of the earrings which help me decide what findings to use. I'll be using this golden um, eye pin and the earring stud post for the oval shape that I have cut out. And for this I'll be using the Oitra Essence Gold Clay and I'll show you how to do the backings for these. First of all, I'm going to use the exact same size and shape of cutter for, that I used for this oval shape and cut out pieces from the golden sheet of clay. And now to do the backings, my superpower here is going to be the sponge. This is going to help me make a very clean backing for the ear posts. Now clay does not stick well to um, metal or glass or non-porous non um, substances. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to um, take a small piece of my golden clay and pass it through the screw pin, the golden screw pin, which will uh, catch on to the grooves of the screw. So what happens is the metal can hold on to the clay and not slip out as easily because the clay is catching on to the grooves of the screw pin. I could have also put a jump ring in my oval shape but I don't want to ruin the beauty of the front of the stud which is why I'm choosing to use this method to attach the elements on my earring. Now I need to place my ear stud on the backing. Uh, I will pierce this right through the clay. But before I do that, I need to know exactly where I should be piercing it. Do I want it to be in the center or do I want it to be a little higher? So once I figure that out, I will place the ear stud and pierce it right through the clay, which will go into the sponge, which is why I'm using a sponge as a backing. I'll now use liquid clay to uh, fix the front portion onto the backing and a very little amount just a smidgen of liquid clay is more than enough to make it sticky enough to adhere to the backing. And now I'll press the front portion down onto the sponge so that the backing of the clay is well adhered to the front portion. And while I'm doing that with my fingers, if you see I'm sandwiching the uh, clay in between the baked portion and the sponge. What this does is it gives me enough uh, uh, place to work around with the clay and also not leave any thumbprints on it. Meanwhile, it's also getting textured by the sponge. I will use a silicone brush now to smoothen the edges and get a completely clean finished look uh, if you use glue in, in place of polymer clay or uh, instead of embedding your findings under clay 
there's a high chance that the glue, glue will eventually wear off no matter how strong the glue is because metal and clay do not adhere together with glue the best way to stick metal to clay is always using the embedding method so uh, this will definitely ensure that your pieces will not fall apart another method to ensure that your ear studs are um, properly fixed to your clay pieces is using uv resin or epoxy resin my only issue with resin is that many people develop allergies so i tend to avoid using resin uh, in parts that might touch the skin Now I'll do the backing for the second element in this three element drop earrings and I'll be using golden clay again for the backing of this element. I'll be using two eye pins to, um, uh, on the top and the bottom of this uh, element because the screw pin will be a little short and the eye pins have enough length to go through the length of this element. So I'll be using this on top and bottom so that I can put jump rings through it uh, to connect it to the stud post as well as the focal element of the earring. So my center element backing is done now and I'll be doing the same process with the second piece as well and moving on to the third focal element after. And now comes the really painful part about making earrings, which is the sanding part. I'll not bore you with the details around sanding. I'll probably make a separate video on how to sand. But uh, I used uh, uh, various grits to, just to give you an insight, I used various grits of sandpaper, depending on uh, how rough the edges were and uh, the kind of treatment uh, or sanding treatment that these pieces required. And uh, I sanded these and then moved on to the next level. Now coming to the UV resin part of the earrings, I've used a hard UV resin, uh, the link to this I will be giving in my descriptions and I will be covering all these elements in UV resin. For the stud post, I've used a cardboard uh, piece and a perforated silicone mat to uh, keep them leveled while I apply the UV resin on top. And for the other elements, I have just used a basic silicone mat. For the flat pieces uh, i've also used uh, a simple toothpick and some uh, nail stickers for accents and i will be using the glitter gold glitter or silver glitter and a pair of tweezers to place place my nail stickers and other elements on the um, pieces and to cure, I've used this UV lamp. Uh, the link to this as well will be given in the description box below. Also, to line the uh, elements on the edges, I'm using this acrylic paint marker, gold paint marker. Um, it just gives a very nice finish once uh, you give the edges uh, a nice rim with the acrylic gold paint.
I'm using these tiny rhinestone sequins just to give an accent to the center element. So I'll be fixing these using the UV resin only and it will add a little more shine to the piece. I won't bore you with the resin part of the earrings as well in case you want a detailed video on how to resin polymer clay earrings please do drop me a message and I shall take that up meanwhile here's a final result of the resin pieces I just need one last step of adding one small detail to the focal element of my earrings and that will be the nail stickers and that should complete our peacock inspired blue window dangler earrings. I feel these nail stickers would just be the very nice touch that these earrings require. It's dusty gold and it'll just add that tiny bit of sparkle that it needs. And I'll be using some floral stickers most probably that'll look the best with this look. And here's a final piece, uh, the final pair of my peacock dangler earrings. Let me know how you find them. I, I think they look absolutely beautiful because the client wanted something that was absolutely bold, big, sparkly that goes with her Indian wedding attire. And I added a bit of crystal um, accents as well to this just to add that little sparkle and some sparkles on the back as well. Don't forget to leave your comments down in the comment section. Also hit the subscribe button if you like this video and would like some many more videos like this. And yes, follow me of course. Please follow me, like me, subscribe to my channel and I'll be more than happy to share more tutorials like this in the future with you. If you like my work, you can also follow me on Instagram, Facebook and Pinterest where I keep sharing my updates, my work other than polymer clay in watercolors, graphite and whatnot. So that's all for today. I'll be coming back with a lot more tutorials, not just earrings, many more things and I hope to hear from you soon too. Bye bye.